Good morning, I am Ophelia Barizo, the Science Teaching Chair at Highland View Academy in Hagerstown, Maryland. I plan curriculum for science at HVA and I also teach chemistry, chemistry in the community, two sections of environmental science, one of which is an honors class. I teach biology and also forensic science. I've been at the school for 17 years and I love this school. Um, the two lessons that are in the video involved lessons in chemistry in the community and in chemistry. In chemistry in the community, we've been studying alkanes or saturated hydrocarbons. Students have been building models of simple alkanes. They've also learned how to write molecular formulas, structural formulas, condensed formulas, and electron dot diagrams. In chemistry, we're studying quantum chemistry and we are learning about electrons and electron configurations. We had just finished a lesson on the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle and the Schrodinger's equation. And in this lesson, students are learning how to write electron configurations of simple elements. Good morning, class. Today we're going to study about alkanes. Uh, does anybody remember what alkanes are? What are alkanes? Anybody? Hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons. Okay, what kind of hydrocarbons? Saturated. Saturated. saturated hydrocarbons. What does it mean to be a saturated hydrocarbon? What is a saturated hydrocarbon? Anybody? Raise your hand if you know the answer. It's a carbon with how many bonds? Four. Four bonds, right? Four bonds. So we're going to make models of alkanes today, and we're going to relate it to the structural formula, the molecular formula, the condensed formula, and the electron dot diagram. Uh, here are uh, the, the stuff that we're going to study. We're going to study, we're actually going to build molecular models, right? And we're going to show the molecular formula. We are going to relate that to the structural formula, the condensed formula, and the Lewis structure. And we will define those terms as we go along. Now, um, I had asked you to learn the names of the first 10 hydrocarbons. What is a one carbon hydrocarbon? Just say it together. What's a one carbon? Methane. 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 Okay. Two carbons? Ethane. Ethane. Three? Propane. 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 Four? Butane. Butane. Five? Pentane. Pentane. Six? Hexane. Hexane. Good. Seven? Heptane. Eight? Octane. Nine? Nine. And ten? Decane. Very good. Okay. So we are going to build the first hydrocarbon. Now what is a hydrocarbon? It's a chemical compound that has only two elements. What are those two elements? Yes, Tyler? Hydrogen and carbon. Hydrogen and carbon. Very good. So you have molecular models on your desks, and the carbon would be the black spheres, okay? And remember, what bonds are involved in carbon compounds, in hydrocarbons? Ionic or covalent? Covalent, right? Co a covalent bonding is the sharing of electrons, right? So you have these bonds, these are your bonds, the tubes are your bonds, and the hydrogens are this white little things here. So those are hydrogens. So I'd like you to, to build a model of methane. So I want you to take the black spheres. And how many bonds does methane have? Four. Are you sure? Yeah. Four bonds. Very good. This carbon has four bonds, right? So I'm going to write the structural formula for methane. OK, this is the Sorry, this is the uh, molecular formula for methane, okay, CH4. One carbon and four hydrogens. The structural formula is this, and it shows you the geometric arrangement in space, but it's only a two-dimensional arrangement in space, right? You cannot have a three-dimensional arrangement because the board's only two-dimensional. So the structural formula shows you a geometric arrangement on a flat surface, making it two-dimensional. Okay, let's start building your methane models. 
Okay, so you have your black carbon. That's very good, okay. And you have your bonds. Great. That's your methane. Let's see, Ethan. How are we doing here? Very good. Jennifer? Oh, she's built her model. Great. Very good. Very good. Everybody made the methane molecule. That's great. Okay, now look carefully at your molecule. What is the geometry of that molecule? If you would put a plane right there, and a plane at the bottom, and a plane right there, and another plane, you know, what three-dimensional figure would a methane molecule actually be if you put planes around it? How many sides would it have? It would have four sides, right? One, two, three, and four. And what would the bottom side be? What would be the shape of the bottom? A triangle. So you actually have four triangles, and it's shaped like a pyramid, right? And this shape is called a tetrahedron. Okay, everybody say tetrahedron. 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 Now, look at the angles here. Are they actually 90 degree angles? No. No. Okay? They're not quite 90 degree angles. But if you look closely here, notice in this methane molecule, you have two electrons here, two electrons here, two electrons here, two electrons there, right? And what charge is an electron? Negative. Negative, right. Very good. Electrons are negatively charged. And so if they are negatively charged, they will actually stay as far apart from each other, right? Because they, what? What do they do? Like charges, what? Repel. Very good. Like charges repel. So they will stay as far apart from each other, and the angle where they are farthest apart from each other is 109.5 degrees. Okay? And this has actually been proven experimentally. The bond angle, see that's the bond angle, that's your carbon, sorry, that's your hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen bond angle is 109.5 degrees. And what is this shape? The shape of the whole thing? It starts with letter T. Tetrahedron. Right, it's a tetrahedral shape. Okay, now, uh, you have your models. So, this is the molecular formula, which shows you the number of atoms of each element in the molecule. This is your structural formula. We don't really have a condensed formula for methane because it's a very simple, it's the simplest hydrocarbon, and I'll show you the condensed formula when we get to more complex hydrocarbons. Now, what would the Lewis structure look like? Can I get a volunteer up here to draw the Lewis structure of methane? Now, what's a Lewis structure? It's an electron, what? Dot. Dot. Do we have a volunteer to write the Lewis structure of methane? Cameron, great. Thank you. You go, Cameron. Very good. Very good. So notice here, carbon has an octet. Right? There are eight electrons around carbon, which makes carbon stable, and there are two electrons around hydrogen. And your covalent bond is right there. That's your covalent bond, right? Where the sharing of electrons takes place. Do you have any questions on these? The first methane of the first hydrocarbon. No? Okay. Now, I want you to build the next hydrocarbon, and the next hydrocarbon is a two-carbon hydrocarbon. So you'll have two carbons this time. So I want you to build your models. What is a two-carbon hydrocarbon? What's the name of the two-carbon hydrocarbon? Start with letter E. Ethane. Ethane. Very good. Ethane. Okay. Let's build ethane. Now remember these are saturated hydrocarbons, 
So the carbon will have four atoms attached to it, right? Do you have four carbons attached, four atoms attached to each carbon? Okay, good. Now you need to fill in your hydrogens. That's great. How are we doing here? Okay, good. One more hydrogen. Great. Very good. Very good. Good, Hunter. That's great. Good. Okay. Now, um, So we're building your two carbon hydrocarbon. Can you hold it up when you're done? That's great. Okay, now let us assign the different formulas here. Molecular formula. Okay, now I want you to count how many carbon atoms there are. How many carbon atoms there are in ethane? Two. two. Okay. Since it's saturated, how many hydrogens do you have? Six, Six hydrogens. Yes? Okay. Yes. So what would the, the molecular formula be for ethane? Raise your hand if you know the answer. Yes, Robert? Great. C2H6. So if you look at your models, so you've got your two carbons, right? And then you have your six hydrogens. Now, if you look at this carbon, this carbon has one bond there, two, three, four. So the carbon has four bonds. It's bonded to four other atoms. Three hydrogens and one carbon, right? Okay. This other carbon has three hydrogens and one carbon. Okay, so that's C2H6. Now, what would a structural formula look like? Do we have a volunteer to write the structural form formula for ethane? Brendan, good.
Do we have eight electrons around each carbon? Yes. No. Yes, right? So, see, when the bond is shared, right, it belongs, this bond belongs to that carbon, it also belongs to this carbon because it's a covalent bond, it's a shared pair. So we have eight there, and we have an octet around this carbon. So that's correct. It makes sense now. Makes sense? Yes. Very good, very good. Okay. Now let us build the next essay, the next hydrocarbon, or the next alkane, a three-carbon alkane. So you already have a two-carbon alkane. What are you going to do next? Just add another carbon to it. Very good. Good. Almost done, that's great. One more hydrogen. How are we doing, Tyler? Good. Good. Heather? Good. Good. Are we getting this? Yes. Great. Okay, let's. Hold up your models. Very good. Okay. Well, good morning, class. We just finished a section on Heisenberg's uncertainty principle and the Schrodinger's equation, right? Today we are going to learn about electron configuration. Everybody say electron configuration. Electron configuration. What is configuration? Electron configuration is the arrangement of electrons in an atom. It's the arrangement of electrons in an atom. Now, why is that important? Why do you think the arrangement of electrons in an atom are important? Anybody? Jennifer. Um, to help tell what kind of atom it is. <coughs> to help tell what kind of atom it is. It's tied into the identity of the atom. Very good. Anything else? The arrangement determines what the atom does. The arrangement determines what the atom does, right? Or the reactivity of the atom. Okay, very good. Any other reasons? The, um, the chemical of the element? Chemical properties. Trend, right? um, you said it determines chemical properties, right? So the electronic arrangement determines chemical properties. Is there another reason you can think of why it's really, really important uh, that electronic, why electron arrangement is really important? Aside from those. Determines yes, the structure? Determines the structure. Now you'll see later on when we go into the bonding chapter, you know, electrons are involved in chemical bonding. And the chemical bonding determines the structure of the atom. Why is structure so important? Why do you think structure is so important? Yes, Derek? Because it determines what jobs the atom will have. Determines the jobs or the function, right? Very good. Structure determines function. You know, and in life, Structure is very important. Molecular structure, and uh, you know, is has bearings on enzymatic reactions. You know, the enzymes need to fit like a lock and a key, and the chemical structures need to fit right for enzymes to work. And that's biochemistry. You know, uh, life is chemistry, really. Now you may think, well, there are lots of atoms. Some atoms like have 100 electrons. Some atoms have 10 electrons. Some atoms have much more electrons, but how do you write an electron configuration or an arrangement when you have so many electrons in an atom? Luckily, we only have three simple rules, okay? So these are the three rules in writing electron configuration. The first one is Aufbau principle. Each electron occupies the lowest energy orbital available first, okay? Why the lowest energy? What is energy related to? See, if I'm jumping up and down, I have so much energy, right? 
But then I stop. Am I more stable this way than I am when I'm jumping up and down? Yes, yes right? So energy is related to stability. So when you feel the lowest energy levels first, you know, you're making sure that the electron is more stable. You're using a stable electronic configuration. Now the next thing is the Pauli exclusion principle. In the Pauli exclusion principle, it states a maximum of two electrons may occupy a single orbital, but only if the electrons have opposite spins. Now, we just studied about orbitals. What's an orbital? It's the region where the electrons are most probably. Right, an orbital is the region where electrons are most probably found. Okay? And you can only have a maximum of two electrons per orbital according to the Pauli exclusion principle. And they need to have opposite spins. So let's say you have this orbital, right? They have to be opposite spins. The arrows represent the electrons. One goes up and one goes down. In other words, one's counterclockwise and one's clockwise. So like, you know, like the top spinning, you know, clockwise and counterclockwise. So only two, and Pauli exclusion principle states that, only two per orbital and they have two opposite spins. Now, why do you think they have to have opposite spins? Let me give you a hint. Yes. So they don't run into each other? They don't run into each other? Um, maybe. Okay. Yes. So the atom will be even? Even. Uh, equal. Uh, think about the charge of the electron. What's the charge of an electron? Negative, negative right? Neutral. And, and you have two negatives, and what's the tendency for two negatives? Yeah, they repel. And so to minimize repulsion, one spins the other way, the other way, one spins the other way. One spins clockwise, and one spins counterclockwise. Okay? So, Pauli exclusion principle. You know, opposite spins to minimize repulsion. And the third one is Hund's rule. Okay, Hund's rule refers to orbitals that have the same energy. Let's say you have three p orbitals, right? These are p, that's px, this is py, and this is pz. Okay, now if you have five electrons, what you do is you put them in singly first before you pair them up, okay? So, again, what it says here, single electrons with the same spin must occupy each degenerate orbital before additional electrons of opposite spins can occupy the same orbital. So, in other words, when you have electrons that you put into orbitals of the same energy, you need to enter them singly first before pairing up, okay? Signally first before pairing up. Okay, now let's do some examples. Okay, now in your, I, I gave each one of you a plastic bag containing um, some orbitals in two dimensions. Okay, and what I want you to do is to build the models. And in your plastic bag, you have a blue uh, polyethylene sheet here blue and it's circle, but try to think of it as three-dimensional, right? So you have a small blue circle, and you have a bigger red circle, and then you have the P orbitals. And it gets more complicated when you do the Bs. So I want you to build your models, okay? Put that in there, good. And a little, these little round, circles, those represent the electrons, okay? They represent electrons. So put the crossbar in, okay? And then put your S orbital first. Now, I, I'm gonna go back to this diagram here. Okay, here are the principal energy levels, okay? And then you have the 1S first and the 2S. So your 1S orbital would be your blue circle, right? Okay, so let's do the electron configuration of simple atoms and, and, and try to go into more complex atoms. So we have hydrogen. Look in your periodicals or the back of your book. Hydrogen, 
atomic number? One. One. So how many electrons does hydrogen have? One. One. So when you're writing the electron configuration, see hydrogen is one, that will be 1s1. One so now look closely here at this number here, okay? The one here represents refers to the, to the electron. So the electronic arrangement for hydrogen, which is one hydrogen atom, uh, sorry, hyd hydrogen, which is one electron. Uh, can I see your models? Where would you put the electron? Would, would, you have a, would you have a red circle? Okay, let's pick another atom. Let's pick a, a more complex atom. Uh, it's not as complex, but okay, neon. How many electrons does neon have? Ten. 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 So there's your ten, neon. And can somebody come up and do the electron configuration? Okay, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm here, right? You can ask. 